This is the fifth of a series of videos about first order scalar equations, first order scalar differential equations to be more precise, as part of a larger series about using the program you see here called Mathematica to study ordinary differential equations. Differential equations are equations that involve derivatives of unknown functions that you'd like to find. The word ordinary here means ordinary or regular derivative as opposed to partial derivative. First order means your equation or equations have only first derivatives in them, not second or third or fourth or fifth derivatives, etc. Scalar as opposed to vector, meaning the you've got really one equation uh, for an unknown real valued function, single valued function as opposed to vector valued or a system of equations. In this video, it's going to be the first one where we use the very important Mathematica function called manipulate to make dynamic interactive output. And in particular, we're going to animate the graph of the unique solution of an initial value problem in two ways that we'll see. It's a particular initial value problem that we saw in the last video, an autonomous first order scalar differential equation. We're going to graph the solution in the slope field. Before we do that, though, we should probably uh, illustrate a simpler example of how to use manipulate. We're going to make a plot of the function f of x equals sine of c times x as a function of x, making an animation in two ways. First of all, making an animation in the same way your calculator does. Mathematica's plot command just produces static output. If I want to see the graph get traced out as the input varies, I need to make an animation using manipulate. manipulate. More importantly, though, we're going to show an animation of the various graphs that we obtain for this function as c itself changes. What we really have here is what's called a family of functions, one function for each value of c, and we'll see how the graphs of those change as c changes. All right, here's the basic syntax for how to plot a function. It's the plot command, capital P. Square brackets are needed for function inputs. The first argument of the plot function is going to be the function we actually plot, c times x. Let's make it c equal to 2 here initially. The second argument is the x window as a list. I'll go from negative 2 pi to positive 2 pi. You can make a pi with escape p escape or use capital pi for the number pi as well. All right, this will produce a graph, and you can make this look nicer in very way, various ways. For example, we can make it thick and blue. All right, but there's no animation. It's a finished product. To make an animation to show the graph itself be traced out as uh, the right endpoint changes, what I want to do is I want to make the right endpoint an animation parameter. I'm going to call it b because b is a common letter used for right endpoints of intervals. That's going to be an animation parameter. I'm going to now put this entire code inside the first argument of the manipulate function. All right, that's the first argument. What's the second argument? You see I have too few arguments given. You see a little red arrow there. I need a second argument. I need to say what happens with that right endpoint b. I want to start it just to the right of negative 2 pi here. Don't start it exactly negative 2 pi because it won't work. Uh, go negative 2 pi plus 0 0.01, say and I want to end it at positive 2 pi. So for many values of b between these two numbers, you're going to get a bunch of different graph, graphs all stitched together in an animation. And I'm going to have a slider for the value of b. What we see here yet right now is not quite ideal though, as I play the value of b, because the plotting window doesn't stay fixed. It, it's kind of fun to look at, but it probably would be better to keep the plotting window fixed. I can fix that with plot range. Capital P, capital R, arrow, uh, in the x direction, let's go from negative 2 pi to positive 2 pi, and in the y direction, let's go from negative 1 to 1. Sometimes you also have to use axis origin uh, to fix the origin, but now uh, it is fixed. We don't need that. All right, so that's just what the calculator would produce. What if I now want to do the extra thing, the more important thing, replace the, the 2 with a c, and let c change? First of all, if you do replace the 2 with the c like this, don't stop there because this is not quite going to work. When these variables are next to each other, cx, Mathematica thinks of that as one variable, cx. All right, that will not work. I either need a space there to multiply them, or as a default, I almost always try to put a star in there to multiply them. I also need to see, say what c varies over. Go over here, put a comma. Let's start c at, say, the value 1 and go up to 5. You should take a moment to think about what you think will happen here. What happens as the value of c changes? c is starting out at 1 here. As c increases, think about it. It's c times x in the argument of the sine function. That's going to correspond to a horizontal compression as c increases. All right, and that is the new thing here. We want to do something similar to this now. 
with <clears throat> our main example here. Here's our differential equation from the last video that we solved. We found the general solution. We also solved an initial value problem where y of 0 was equal to 2. Now I am making the initial value of y being be fixed but unspecified. So I am imagining y sub 0 as being some fixed number like 2 or 3 or 4, but I'm not saying what it is. Because it is something specific, it's fixed, even though it's unspecified, I should have said it's fixed, not, not specific. Um, it is still a unique solution that we're going to find with d solve. We're also going to graph that solution in the slope field, and now the important part, make an animation in two ways, showing how the value, the output of the solution changes as t increases, show the graph get traced out, and more importantly, show how the solution curves themselves change as the initial condition, the initial value of y changes. y sub 0 is going to be really the y-intercept because it's going through the point t equals 0, y equals y 0. Alright, here's the Mathematica code d solve that will solve the initial value problem. Notice the initial value of y is y 0. I'm not writing it as a subscript there, but that's fine. And here's what d solve produces. You can ignore the error there, it still works. Inverse functions are being used. This is, this is right. That is, uh, for a fixed value of y sub 0 or y 0 for short, the unique solution of this initial value problem. Here's the work you could show by hand to do it, uh, using the general solution in this form to solve for the value of c to get this, which works as long as you're not dividing by 0. However, when you, simplify, when you plug it in for c and then simplify, you actually get a function that does work no matter what y 0 is, even if y 0 is 0. Uh, this works. In that case, you would get the function y is always 0, the constant function whose graph is a horizontal line on the horizontal t-axis. However, this function could have a vertical asymptote, and it will be at t equals 4 thirds natural log of y0 minus 3 over y0. Um, that will be defined as a real number whenever that input is positive, which will occur if either y0, the initial value of y, is less than 0 or greater than 3. All right. Pause the video if you want to look that over again. Let's go on now to part B where we make the graph. This code right here makes the graph from the solution from the last video. Uh, this particular function right here. I did make a little change from the last video. I used text style, black, large, italic, in this way that you see here to make the axes look a little nicer, especially with the italic there. All right, so that was a cosmetic change that I made. All right, what we want to do here is we want to take all that you see here and embed it as the first argument of a manipulate. So I'm going to go ahead and type manipulate here. Put an end square bracket over there. You see the up, red upper over there. We want a comma. I need animation parameters. This whole thing, the show, is going to be inside the manipulate as the first argument. What do I want to animate? Well, one thing I want to animate is the right endpoint of the interval that I'm plotting over. I'll call it B again. Start B just to the right of negative 4, like negative 3.99, and go up to positive 4. That will make an animation of the graph of this particular function as t increases. Let's go ahead and watch it. There we go. There's the right endpoint. B is the animation parameter. That's changing, so we're seeing a bunch of different graphs stitched together to see that graph change as t increases. But now I want to change allow myself to change y0 as well. So I'm going to go ahead and take the solution here and copy and paste it down here. y0 now, though, is going to be another animation parameter. Here's syntax that will start the value of y0 at 2, let it go down to negative 1 and up to 4. A little bit of extra syntax there that starts y0 at 2. And here we go. Let's go ahead and let b go up to 4 so we see the whole graph. Now let me let y0 change. As y0 increases, the graph goes up, though it's still increasing there. If it goes down, the graph goes down, though the function's still increasing. If it goes above 3, however, the function goes from increasing to decreasing, and it has a vertical asymptote when y0 is bigger than 3. We already saw that symbolically. And when it goes below 0, it also goes from increasing to decreasing, and once again, you've got a vertical asymptote. That vertical line there is not part of the graph. Uh, Mathematica is just connecting the dots. You can actually get rid of it with a command called exclusions. I think perhaps in the next video I'll do that. What happens when y0 is exactly 3? Take a second to think about that. You should get a horizontal solution. 
a constant function of y always equals 3 for all values of t that solves the differential equation. That's called an equilibrium solution. That also happens when y0 is 0, though we won't see it because it's behind the t-axis. Uh, the t-axis there is in bold black. It's overriding where, where the blue curve is. But it's there, just hidden. y equals 0 all the time also is another equilibrium solution. Okay, so this is very important, I think, to, to realize you get a bunch of different solutions for different values of y0, and a couple of them are constant functions. Again, those are called equilibrium solutions. I think I'll end this video there. In the next video, I plan to use a command um, that's new to Mathematica 10 and was also introduced to me by somebody named David Arnold that I uh, met online from looking at my videos. Um, called dsolveValue that is a little easier to use in some ways than dsolve is.